So uh, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Akash Deep Singh and I am a fourth year undergraduate student in the Department of Aerospace Engineering at IIT Kharagpur. Uh, I shall be presenting on my topic of uh, effects of flapping frequency on the aerodynamic performance of elliptical tandem flapping wings. Uh, this project is done under the supervision of Professor Sunil Manohadash. Uh, to introduce the topic, uh, tandem flapping wings are basically a pair of wings on the either side of the body. Uh, total four wings in this case. For example, you can see the dragonfly here uses flapping wings to cruise and hover. And similarly, the flapping fins in a flapping, uh, flying fish are used to jump and glide. So you can see that the flapping wings have a, a lot of possible flight modes. Uh, and they have uh, some characteristics such as high maneuverability <coughs> and stealth, uh, energy efficient because there is no uh, extra power source like a jet engine in case of a fixed wing aircraft. And it's also a very viable option for small-scale low-speed uh, underwater vehicles. Uh, you can see one of the examples as well, uh, which is used as for uh, deep sea surveillance. Uh, regarding the literature survey, uh, I have referred. Uh, we have referred uh, on the thrust performance of a single flapping wing, uh, which is a generalization uh, where tandem flapping wings is an extension to this. Uh, the author has studied uh, flapping frequency effects on this thrust performance of a single flapping wing in a, a forward flight. Uh, similarly, it has been extended to tandem flapping wings. However, the study is on uh, how wing spacing and uh, the phase angle between rear and uh, front wings uh, varies the thrust performance. Uh, the uh, subsequent studies are on how uh, different parameters such as the uh, rear wing size with respect to the front wing size and uh, the uh, even the presence or absence of a tandem uh, rear wing in a tandem flapping wing or uh, the effective uh, angle of attack profile varies the thrust performance. Uh, the motivation to the study uh, leads from uh, that uh, the tandem flapping wings have been studied before and it has been proved that uh, the frequency with in increasing the frequency leads to high thrust and uh, increase in thrust performance in general. But uh, there has been a study uh, that we have studied that at very high frequencies this might not be the case. It alters the performance of the uh, tandem uh, flapping wing and rear flapping uh, rear wing in uh, specific. And also the type of vortex wake interactions which are shared by the front wing and the rear wing has a different uh, different category when the frequencies are increased. Um, to uh, The present research focuses on this very topic to study the wing wake interactions and the thrust performance, both transient thrust performance and time average thrust performance. And also to char uh, characterize the wing wake interactions into four types based on the uh, non-dimensional frequency uh, and the effective angle of attack. Uh, the problem statement as you can see here is two wings uh, in tandem configuration at a distance of r. Uh, for our study, <coughs> r is constant here and the <coughs> and motion, uh, motions are characterized by the sinusoidal form of this form in general with a phase angle of uh, uh, capital phi between the, uh, the heaving and uh, sorry, the front and the rear uh, airfoils and uh, small phi for the other uh, two categories. And for the integral uh, conservative governing equation is used in uh, ALE which is the arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian form uh, to uh, numerically model the problem. And uh, this is the dimensions and the uh, flow setup that we have used. Uh, this is a computational study. So uh, I will also describe the numerical methodology and operating parameters we have selected as particular parameters based on the previous studies uh, because 90 degree for example gives the optimum flapping uh, efficiency and uh, other uh, parameters such as the heaving amplitude 0 0.03 meters is due to the restrictions on experimental setup that we have available in our laboratory. Uh, defining the th transient and time average thrust coefficients as usual, we proceed. And the computational domain that we have used is a rectangular domain with two zones, uh, stationary and dynamic zone. Stationary zone has a non-moving like stationary mesh and dynamic zone has a uh, airfoil defined by UDF which moves in a heaving and pitching motion. Uh, the boundary conditions that we have used are the inlet velocity pressure outlet and no slip condition on the airfiles. Uh, we have considered a 60 CF cross uh, 40 CF domain uh, where CF and CR are same because uh, in our case it's, uh, we have considered same. Uh, this neglects the far field boundary effects uh, and gives us only the steady, uh, not steady but uh, the settled solution. And we have also done an inflation layer around the airfiles to capture the vortices uh, close to the wall of the airfiles and between the airfiles as well. Uh, the mesh independency test and solver validation have been done. Uh, 
uh, in which we have taken four grid sizes, element sizes, and uh, seen that the mesh errors are uh, insignificant. And uh, the solver has been validated with uh, Lua et al. 2016 experimental and CFD data both. Uh, the 5% turbulence intensity and 10% turbulence intensity has been done uh, because uh, the data was not specified in the previous studies. So it gives us better result with 10% TI, uh, which we have proceeded with further as well. And MESH2, as you can see from the table here, gives us the least error, uh, which has been then again uh, taken further for the studies. Uh, as for the results, uh, we have taken a time average study of the wings uh, for front, rear, single, and the tandem as a whole system. Uh, the interesting results that we have observed here are that uh, the uh, Strahol number, uh, is, which is the non-dimensional frequency, uh, as it has increased, we see an increase in the, uh, uh, the thrust performance uh, for all cases. However, there is a critical Strahol number at which the thrust starts to decrease. <coughs> and this increase is the maximum for the rear wing and maximum for the, uh, decrease is also maximum for the rear wing. And uh, we observe that the rear wing has the max, uh, highest peak uh, compared to other cases. Uh, however, uh, even though it's the maximum, uh, <coughs> critical is achieved much earlier for the rear wing compared to other cases in all the alpha knots that we have taken. In this case, there are three. So uh, we can see that these dotted lines uh, signify the struggle critical, which has, uh, uh, which is the point where the thrust starts to degrade. And uh, another thing that I would like to highlight here is that as alpha knot increases, our struggle critical shifts towards the right side. So that's, uh, that's an indication of how the uh, degradation of thrust is delayed as we increase the alpha knot, giving us a more operable range of uh, flight. Uh, as far as transient thrust performance is considered, uh, we define the uh, wake, characterized, uh, wake interactions into four parts, type 1, 2, 2A and 3. So uh, as from the studies we have done, uh, we see that in the first case, which is the 0.2 struggle number, the first plot, and this is 0.4 and 0.6 uh, subsequently. So 0.2 shows uh, no um, miscellaneous effect due to near wake structures or any other parameter. It shows just one peak, uh, and that is an increase and decrease uh, more or less in a harmonic way, uh, which is defined as type one, just one parabolic uh, transient CT profile. And the second profile has another uh, type of another type of interaction coming up only for the rear wing. The remaining stays the same as type one. Uh, where there is a flat edge slightly before, uh, slightly after the start, and then there is a peak, and then uh, there is a subsequent uh, cycle goes ahead. Uh, and as we go ahead even further, increasing the frequency, uh, type one totally vanishes. There is only type two A where there is uh, um, uh, th there is a flat uh, edge, and there is a decrease before there is a peak. Like there is, there was no decrease here, but there is a decrease here. And type three has a peak, and then decrease, and then a peak, and then again a decrease, which is a totally new type of profile. Uh, which uh, has been noticed in case of uh, front wing and single wing at high frequencies. So uh, these profiles can be further explained why the flat edge is there and why the peaks are there using pressure and vorticity contours. So these four plots are for 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 uh, accordingly. So 0 0.2 we can see that uh, the vortex interactions are uh, not trailing. Well. So there is, a, there is a vorticity addition and thrust performance increase. But uh, it's not as uh, much as 0.4 because in 0.4 case we see it's near the middle of the airfoil. So the real, uh, the LEV which is shed has more time to uh, uh, increase the thrust of the system. And uh, here there is almost no interaction. So we see there's a very less uh, LEV strength formed over the uh, LEV that is formed over the uh, tender, rear wing. And uh, another <coughs> interesting thing uh, why the flat edge was there in this case is because of the residual RLEV that is a LEV which is shed at the end of each stroke that comes into significance here. Uh, it leads to uh, competence with the thrust and uh, increases the drag instead of the thrust and that's why the thrust and the drag cancel out to make a flat edge here. So that is the reason why it has been shown here uh, by the flow, how the flow physics is reasoned here. And uh, uh, sorry. So uh, the third case uh, ultimately has a very high suction region. This comes into play because of the high rotation rate, uh, which is uh, theta dot, and uh, that depends on frequency. And that decreases the drag further. So the study is concluded using uh, how computational methods are used to uh, investigate frequency effects. Uh, we see that tandem flapping wings owe to the interaction of constructive interference between shear layer and rear wing, and how Strahl number is uh, classifying the type of wake interactions. In future, we plan to characterize this in more detail and also uh, extend this experiment. Uh, thank you.
Is it like a pencil? Questions? Yeah. Questions, please. No question? Uh, I have just one query uh, from my side. Yes. You are talking about latent frequency. So how, how you are uh, generating this? Uh, is there any uh, basis uh, to give a specific frequency for that? Uh, sir, uh, we uh, define the frequency, uh, we have defined a sinusoidal form for the flapping and heaving. Uh, is there any reason behind? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> we have observed that uh, the real driving flies from previous studies um, follow a more complicated uh, fat, uh, pattern of an asymmetrical flapping. But this is a more of a uh, to study the uh, to build up the study. We have used just a harmonic uh, simplified case of uh, flapping wings, which is used in over case and cruise case only for driving flies. So we are trying to extend. We will uh, change the frequency and uh, the, uh, even the uh, modeling later. But for now, to make the study. Uh, Simple and to uh, in, to understand it better, we have used only sinusoidal cases. But we but, but this is already uh, been done by some of uh, the other researchers. I mean, they are really uh, Yes, sir. But uh, the focus of the study is to see how frequency can uh, decrease the thrust as well when it's very high. But it it has not been studied how very high frequency decreases the thrust. But uh, is there uh, means a possibility of any other kind of uh, wavefront other than sinusoidal? Uh, yes, sir, definitely. There is a uh, possible of uh, a modified uh, sinusoidal where there is an elliptic uh, top in, uh, in in the peak of the sign. So that is possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Akash uh, for the nice presentation. Thank you. So uh, I have not, uh, not uh, reached uh, Mr. Kirit.